Hey guys, Kalila here and welcome to another video. I feel like I haven't done a sit down and like talk in a while, mainly because I've been doing like vlogs and stuff, but forget that. Today is a different kind of video. I am going to be doing a video about my yarn stash. I have not done a video like this before, like talking about all of my yarn stash. The only time I've done something about my yarn stash was like a year ago when I was selling my yarn but now I have a yarn stash that I'm so happy with and so excited to share and this year I was like I want to start using more of my stash now that it is at a size that I am happy with I want to be able to really go through my stash instead of buying yarn I want to use the yarn that I have because I feel like it'll make me a lot more happy buying new yarn knowing that I have used up most of my stash because the whole point of buying new yarn of course is to replenish the stuff that you have used or just to buy yarn just because you want a certain project or because you like the yarn whatever the case may be for me i like to buy yarn because i just love to think about the projects that i'm going to be making etc etc but also for me personally it can get a little overwhelming thinking about buying new yarn knowing that i have a bunch of yarn here that i can be using that that's just as beautiful for the projects that I want to do. I was inspired by Lizzie from Hive Knits. Oh my gosh, amazing podcaster. Definitely go and subscribe to her. She's amazing. I'll leave her information down below. But I was watching her yarn stash tour and I was like, oh my gosh. And I was seeing how excited she was getting just looking at the yarn that she has. And I was like, wait, uh, I need to do that because I really want to get rehyped for the yarn that I have in my stash. and. As I was thinking about recording this video, I was supposed to record it yesterday, but yesterday I spent that time accidentally assigning projects to every single yarn that I have in my stash. And that wasn't even supposed to be the point. I was supposed to take out my yarn, see what I have, see what projects I know I'm gonna make for certain things, and all of a sudden it turned into me with my sister Malika, Mr. Robin here on YouTube, if you wanna go check her out, helping, she was helping me with the yarn and assignment of projects, I was holding up the yarn and I was like, all right, sweater, cardigan, tee, socks, hat, like what, what do you see this yarn being? And we ended up doing my entire stash, except for like a few cones, which is fine because I really want my cones to be decoration for now. I know that sounds weird, but I just love the way yarn cones look like in a background of someone's place and it's like on a shelf and everything oh my gosh when I see Inga with her cones on the side I'm like yeah I need to get a shelf just for my cones so right now my cones I'm not viewing them as yarn to knit with just yet two of them I did accidentally assign projects to them because I was thinking about certain projects and I was like oh my gosh this would be so good and we're like boom that yarn right there so that is what happened yesterday so now I'm filming it today instead of showing you guys yarn and being like yeah I don't know what I'm gonna knit with this but like here it is I want to actually show what I'm gonna make with it I will insert pictures as well when I say the project so that you guys know what the project looks like and so you can imagine what the yarn will look like as that project also 90% of this will be petite knit patterns why because i have 82 of her patterns i know i know okay i have many other designers patterns as well but she is my favorite designer mainly because of how simple her projects look i am a simple simple gal okay i love simple things okay plain colored simple hello i knit this but you know i'll show you guys in the in the podcast so I was I'm always attracted to her type of patterns and her projects that she creates so because I have so many of her patterns I'm like might as well use my yarn for those patterns you know I mean it doesn't matter I don't have to justify why I like a certain designer I like her and I'm gonna use her patterns so now that I've said all of that let's get into showing you my yarns oh wait 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 also, I feel like I've already talked so much and I'm like so close to the camera because I'm so excited. Okay, let me take a breather. Breather? Okay. Anyway, I organized my yarn stash from 
based on weight so i did like mohair and then not like in my bag because i keep my stash in this i'll show you oh hold on <laughs> just a second there are two places i keep my stash i keep my stash in these bags which are which are my hand dyed yarns in this in that bag and then i keep my other yarns in here <laughs> So that no bugs get in them, but also so that I can keep them all in one place. So I feel like that's pretty organized for me. And I sectioned it out. I wrote it, oh, my pen. I have a knit plans notebook, right? Where I think I showed this in a podcast before where I write out everything that I have created, well, finished. Everything that I finished for 2022 and all of that. And I actually wrote out my yarn stash here it filled just three pages which is pretty good so i have mohair mohair fingering weight and then dk weight and aaron weight i don't know if you can see that dk and aaron which i only have one dk weight yarn and one aaron weight yarn because most of my things are fingering weight i'm a fingering weight gal DK weight sweaters and stuff, but fingering weight yarn paired with like a mohair or an alpaca strand type. But I wrote down everything that I have in my stash so that when I need to cross something off, I've used it, I can cross it off and I can keep track of what I have in my stash. Also inspired from Lizzie because I was tired of looking at my stash and feeling empty and feeling blank like, what am I gonna, what am I gonna knit with this? So. I think that's enough of an intro i'm not gonna say these by their weight well i will but also if they have a pairing with another yarn i will show that yarn as well so i'm gonna start with the mohair section but i'll bring in some fingering weight yarns because some of them match with some no all of the mohair i have match with another yarn so let's start with this one Ooh, I'm going to be moving a lot in this video. <laughs> I just knocked down my camera, so I had to fix it. I'm going to be moving a lot in this video because I'm, my yarn is all back there and I need to shift a bit. Oh, I also wrote out how many skeins I have of each one as well, so I can keep track of that way too. Okay, the first thing I have is this Knitting for Olive Mohair in soft peach i absolutely love knitting for all of my hair it's so beautiful but the yarn that i am pairing it with i bought this yarn last year to pair with this yarn last year <laughs> and i used it for something else and i still have six and a half skeins left over so i don't remember how many skeins i originally had but it was a lot and i i'm gonna pair it with this yarn right here which is Lover by Sorella. You can see here, Lover. It is from her Taylor Swift collection, which is the first collection I ever bought from last year. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I need mohair to go with this. This was before I started knitting. I was actually going to crochet with this. So I bought six skeins of it because crochet takes up a lot of yarn. And for an oversized sweater quantity of yarn for crochet, I would need around six skeins. And turns out I started knitting. So I don't need six skeins of this yarn. I have six and a half skeins of this yarn as well. And... That is fine. I got this peach mohair because I want it to match. If I can move my face out the way. I want it to match these peachy tones in it. And of course, I don't care for my mohair to be like a direct match with my yarn. I love the way mohair just changes things up. But yeah, these two are going to be used together to make the April Cardigan by Petite Knit. This is a cardigan I have talked about a lot in my podcasts. I have gotten... A bunch of my projects done and out the way you guys know i'm waiting to make the cardigan because i want to get my other whips out of the way i have gotten a lot of my whips out the way i have one more before i can actually you know before i can actually start based on what i have what parameters and deadlines i have given myself before i can start on this and i'm so freaking excited this is going to be the first cardigan have i made a knit cardigan no 
Yes, <laughs> yes. I made a cardigan from Kara, Kara's Knits. It was chunky. So this will be my first cardigan that's a cardigan I actually want to do and not out of using up yarn to get out of my stash. So that is the first pairing. The April cardigan is the, will it be the first project I do after this? Probably. We will see, but I'm so excited. The next mohair and fingering weight yarn pairing is Knitting for Olive Dusty Artichoke. I love this yarn so much. Of course, I had to get it because of all the craze around knitting for all of Dusty Artichoke. You guys know, everybody was going crazy about it, okay? I have six skeins of this. I usually get around six to seven skeins of mohair because that's a safe, <laughs> usually five is good enough for me for a sweater quantity, but I am a just-in-caser. I have said that before in my video, I think, the last video I posted, I'm a just in caser, which means I'm always like, just in case, like just in case I need more, I'm gonna buy more. And I'm not someone who gauge swatches, so that is also another just in case, you know, just in case my stuff is off and it's a little bigger, at least I have more yarn to accommodate that, you know? Now the yarn that I'm gonna pair with this is, ah, this is a woolly knit cone. It is in the color, the color is inside at the bottom. It is sage green. So this is a 500 gram British wool cone. You guys already know how I feel about these, about these yarns. I love it so much, but look at this pairing, okay? The way it's showing up on camera is exactly how it looks in real life. So surprisingly, this is perfect. And isn't this the most perfect match ever? I'm not someone who cares for perfect matches, but as soon as I saw this yarn on the site, I was like, mm, it's gonna match this yarn. It's gonna match this mohair, 100%. And I didn't know what to do with this mohair, so I'm so glad I bought this cone. And also, this cone was kind of, mm, how do you say, the color on the website was kind of accurate. For me to match it this well because i was like oh my gosh this looks like the exact shade of this dusty dusty artichoke and it came in and it was literally the exact shade so these are oh i'm talking so much about the yarn what am i gonna make with this let's see i'm going to make the novice cardigan mohair edition it is in a color that is similar to this and when Malika and I were looking through patterns because i just did like sweater because i have all of my patterns in my dropbox all the patterns, I have them in different folders. I have Petite Knit, I have Cagery, My Favorite Things Knitwear, November Knit. So they're all in different folders. And I saw this and I was like, we're like, <gasps> novice cardigan, mohair edition. Yes, 100%. And the color matches the sample. So it's just like, perfect. Of course, this is 500 grams. I don't need 500 grams for that. So I will definitely still have like a sweater quantity left or more depending i would say i would say i'll have a sweater quantity left after doing a cardigan with this so i'll probably get more mohair to pair with it so that i can make a sweater what sweater i don't know we'll see but so far this will be the novice cardigan mohair edition yes i love this <laughs> the next mohair and fingering weight yarn pairing is this camera turned off <laughs> is this knitting for olive yarn this brown yarn it's called dark cognac it is so beautiful i don't know if it showed up but yeah dark cognac is what it is called and i have eight skeins of this why did i get eight skeins i don't know because eight skeins is pushing my six to seven normal range but the yarn, how many do I have in there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> this yarn, I just had to get, where did I get this from? Where did I get this yarn from? I think I got it from Shop La Mercerie, possibly. I believe I did. Yeah, I got this yarn from Shop La Mercerie. It is the Biche Bouche yarn, Les 
cashmere and lamb's wool as you can see there so this is a blend of 12.5% cashmere and 87.5% lamb's wool from Scotland from a family-owned fiber mill and it is so beautiful let me show you up close what it looks like it is like this heathered why did my voice just shake it is like this heathered color it's brown it's a brown color obviously it's called dark red brown which i can see 100 percent, and it is so freaking beautiful this is my first time using well i haven't used it yet but my first time getting a cashmere lamb's wool blend and it is it's soft but it's rusticky like it is not it's a rougher yarn but it's not rough i don't know how to say it it's it's very very natural okay like very natural let me show you some strands it's a fingering weight yarn well yeah the meterage is 270 yards or 248 meters per 50 grams which i would say is probably a light fingering possibly because um together if it's 100 grams it's like 500 something yards which is a lot but that is the strand and that's what that's what the yarn looks like up close like it's a very it's a very very natural yarn but it's so soft to the oh hello there we go <laughs> but it's so soft to the touch and this is what I'm pairing together. I had this yarn first and then, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. I received it first, but I got them at the same time, possibly. Whatever. It doesn't matter. I was looking for a pairing to go with this. And so I got that. And I think that is a beautiful pairing. It's going to make this a softer brown color because this is lighter it's just gonna be so great together. The color, the color. Mm. I have seven skeins of this, by the way. And the and the project that I wanna do with this is the Marseille sweater. This sweater right here. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna do stripes. I'm doing just the sweater by itself. I think it uses a DK. A, hold on. Oh, never mind. Never mind. Why am I why am I saying that? It uses Double Sunday by Sadness Garn, which before I knew what Double Sunday was, I thought the Double Sunday was like an Aaron weight yarn or something. Then I looked it up and it's a DK weight yarn. I'm like, oh, okay. So it uses Double Sunday by Sadness Garn, which is a DK weight yarn, which means I don't have to do any finagling to do this sweater. This will make a DK weight. Oh my gosh, that makes me so much happier now. But yeah, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the size medium and not do stripes because I saw the way this sweater looked without stripes and I was like, mm, I like that. I really like that. So this is what we're gonna go with a brown Marseille sweater and hopefully when would I get this? when would I start it? I don't know if I will start it anytime soon because of all the other projects that I want to get done but this is definitely a good winter project because this lamb's wool is gonna feel so nice and so warm. Oh my gosh I'm excited. Alrighty the next yarn. <laughs> I'm so excited about this yarn okay. The next yarns that I'll be showing you or the next mohair is this mohair right here it is tin silk mohair by sendus garn which just means thin silk mohair because they have like a thicker mohair so this is the thin version which is just the normal version of mohairs that we're all used to you know the lace weight version but look at this color first of all oh my gosh beautiful it's actually showing up darker in there i wonder if i put it back no it's actually a little, a little bit lighter. It's a rustier type of color. It's less orange, like it's showing up in here. But this is 
The color is 3554. I don't know if that's like the actual color number. I mean, it says color. Like, it says C-O-L right there. So that's the dye lot and that's the color lot or something. And the yarn I'm pairing it with is this Fiorcolana Arveta Classic. It is a superwash yarn, but it doesn't feel like superwash. Okay. It does compare to the other wools that I felt like my yarn cones and like the lamb's wool. Like it definitely feels like superwash compared to those yarns. But compared to the superwash yarns that I'm used to from commercial places, this does not feel like superwash. It is so much more refined and woolier than the like drop superwash yarns. Drop superwash yarns feels like I won't say plastic, but it's very bouncy and not really wooly. It doesn't feel like wool at all. This feels like wool to me, but just super, super soft. Is this merino? Yeah. Superwash merino wool. Yeah. And these are going to be paired together. I know such a drastic difference in the colorways, but I wanted that because imagine how the sweater is going to look. What sweater? You may ask. The first sweater by Hive Knits. Yeah, yeah, imagine that. Mm -hmm. Who did I see do a color like this? I think I saw Caroline. I think I saw Caroline do it, do it in this color. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I was influenced by Caroline's knits because of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right, kind of. Okay, it's like a, hers is more of like an orangey color. But I was still, whoa, it got dark. I was still influenced. What color is this? Color 810. Okay. But yeah, I got, I think I got seven skeins of each one, which, you know, that's my typical number for a nice sweater quantity for me. And this is going to be the first sweater. I'm so excited. I'm, I said this before in a podcast. I'm so nervous. Oh my gosh red red okay i'm so nervous to do that pattern but also so excited i'm nervous because it does have fisherman's rib and i was reading through it and i was just like oh my gosh but she explains everything so perfectly so you literally do not have to worry about mm, forgetting what what part you were supposed to be doing because everything is detailed so specifically and it is just like hallelujah is written like that because now I'm not as nervous to do this sweater but this is definitely going to be like a December January February like I will definitely be working on this during the new year so 2023 this is what you will see <laughs> the next mohair that you'll see from me is something I actually forgot to write down no it's written down. I forgot to write it down the first time I was going through my yarn because it's in this. And I forgot that I had hand dyed mohair. So I had to rip out the page and start over, <laughs> but it's okay. This is my first time ever getting hand dyed mohair. This is from the Yarn Attic Co. <laughs> Do you guys see this color? It's blue, but icy blue. It probably looks white here, but oh my gosh, it just looks white, does it? Okay, let's put it next to my hair so maybe it turns bluer because it is a bluer color. Okay, you can see it kind of looks like, oh, 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 hopefully you can see it is a bluish. It's a, it's a very, very icy blue leaning toward white, but it's not white, you know, it's like the northern tribe the northern water tribe colors of avatar the last airbender why am i speaking like that i don't know i'm trying to process and speak at the same time but the icy i, I don't even i say that and i don't even know if there is a color that will be able to accurately show this or depict this maybe the merino wool will show it better but this is the first i got this for my birthday last year oh my gosh it's about to be a year already yeah, I got this for my birthday last year along with the Akatar collection, but this wasn't part of the Akatar collection. And when I saw this colorway, I was like, I'm getting it. 
birthday present to myself, okay? Look at this. <laughs> this is called faux fur. Oh, okay, that's a good that's a good depiction right there. I like that. Yeah, this is called faux fur. And this base is mouthwatering mohair, 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. It is 459 yards and it is 50 grams. This one is fresh fingering. It is 75% merino, 25% nylon. 463 yards per 100 grams. So this is a light fingering and this is a mohair paired together. I would say it's a light fingering because it's, it's 463 yards. That's a lot for 100 grams for fingering weight. So I feel like it's light fingering. And I typically like to get sock yarn bases. So merino wool with nylon in it because I like that extra integrity even though I usually pair myself with mohair but I still like my merino wools to feel very strong so that's why you will see me get a lot with nylon in it but this is the project the project this is the yarn together originally I was gonna do it's not a sweatshirt with the yarn that I showed you the Biche Bouche yarn I was gonna do it's not a sweatshirt with that one as well and this one and I ended up going with the wandering flock yarn randomly which I had no plans for and I was just like yeah let me use that it was weird but it came out cute so I like that this yarn is going to be the novice slipover just imagine how pretty it's going to be looking like this oh I love a big slipover like the slipover that I made this is the Stockholm slipover it's like a typical normal it's just like a normal slipover you know but the novice slipover is huge it's beautiful I don't know the recommended yarn I think it's like a DK and a mohair or whatever but uh, I don't care I'm gonna use these two together I'm just gonna make a bigger size so that it'll come out the size that I want I say bigger size I'm just gonna do a medium and however it comes out is however it comes out because I like to live life on the edge okay it's like I just like I just like seeing how things are gonna turn out I just can't wait to see how this turns out so yeah it'll be the novice sweater what <laughs> novice slip over that's gonna be so freaking pretty I have four skeins of each of these so that is plenty and then some for a slip over so Maybe I'll make a beanie out of it afterwards. We'll see. All right, we have moved from the mohair. I have no more mohair in my stash. Those are all the mohairs that I have. So everything else that I have in my stash, I will need to get a mohair to pair with it or get an alpaca to pair with it because some some projects I'm going to pair Jobs Alpaca Silk with it so that it's a it makes a thicker weight instead of lace weight mohair because the drop top pocket silk is like a worsted weight it says it's an iron weight i swear it feels like a dk or whatever but either way no more mohairs from me the next yarn that i'll be showing is this yarn here it is knitting for olive pure silk if my face will get out of the way there we go knitting for olive pure silk in the color copper now if you are not new here you will know that i was using this oh the camera's about to cut off should i keep talking i don't know okay anyway this yarn was used yeah anyway <laughs> this yarn was used for the camisole number two now i have i started a camisole number two in december a long time ago and i have not gotten progress on it at all because I've not worked on it I have other things to work on yada 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 blah 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 and I don't want to work on it anymore I want to turn it into something else I will turn it into something else the reason I don't want to work on it anymore is because it's bottom up and just the thought of making something just so long without knowing First of all, how much yarn I'll need, how much yarn to use up, because I want to use up as much as possible. I have 12 skeins of these, okay? 12. I'm single stranding this, okay? And the top part is the last part. And I'd rather know that I'm using most of the yarn up if I was going, I would know if I was going from top to bottom, right? Instead of bottom up. So I'm going to do that 
some other time but for now i'm changing the project that i'm doing with this instead i'm going to do the ripple halter by jesse may she just came out with that and it is so nice it is so pretty and i love it okay it is like this nice deep cut not deep cut in the front but deep cut on the sides tank top and i'm gonna turn that into a dress okay yes it is said to do a smaller size for negative ease which would put me at like an extra small <laughs> but if i want to turn this into a dress with no other modifications I don't want to increase for my hips. I don't want to increase for my butt. I don't want to increase for anything because it is a rib halter top, like three by three rib or something. I could be wrong. It's something rib more than two by two. So that means it's super, 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 super stretchy, which means it can stretch over my body easily. So I'm just going to do the size small because I don't want the top to be too loose. I don't have a big bust. It's just like, 85 90 centimeters so i'll rather do the size small which is originally my size anyway for my bust and then just keep going down and just let the fabric stretch over me instead of trying to do increases to accommodate my bottom half and so that's what i'm gonna do with this and the good thing is it's worked top to bottom so once i finish the top I can just work as long as I want and use up as much yarn as possible or as much yarn as I want because who knows maybe I'll want it for something else but probably not after making a dress so I'll just make it as long as I can with the yarn that I have and I think I'll be happier with that like I'm already so excited just thinking about it and it's just like mm. and it's gonna be so nice like look at it on my skin color it's just gonna look okay I know that <laughs> a lot of people don't like to wear yarns that match their skin color. This doesn't really match my skin color. It's more red, but I think it'll be so cool that it's gonna be so close to my skin color. It's, it's, just, it's just gonna be nice, okay? I imagine it's gonna be nice. So that is the new dress that I plan to make. And I'm glad I made that change because I didn't want the yarn to just sit there. I love this yarn so much. It's so good, it's so nice, it's just like, oh, beautiful. So that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, I like that. Okay, next up are my cones. I've already showed you one of my cones, which is the green one, the sage green cone. But at the same time, I also bought more woolly knit cones <laughs> from, I bought it at the same time, okay? I have four woolly knit cones and one holst garn. So this is the second woolly knit cone. Oh. Wow, it is so much more red on screen than it is here. It's more of like a berry color here. Like in real life, I think this is, I think that's more what it looks like. But it is such, such a pretty red color. It's like a dark wine red color. It's called Cast It Red. This is also a 500 gram British wool cone. But see, Cast It Someone tried to correct me before and say like, oh, it's pronounced cassette. I'm like, no, it's not that cassette. I promise. <laughs> it says cassette. But, you know, if you see this now and you see how it's spelled and it's still pronounced cassette, then I'll, I'll accept that. But yeah, these are the only yarns that I have in my stash that I have no clue what I'm going to do with because I actually just had no plan with this. I bought it to be a nice decoration until I actually use up the rest of my stash and then I'll get to the cones, okay? Because the cones are just special, okay? They're special. The next woolly knit cone that I have is this pink one. Oh my gosh, it's a little darker in real life. I feel like I'm going to say that. Oh, actually, now that the light went down, this is kind of exactly what it looks like. It is also 500 gram British wool cone and it is called Pink Rose Mix. Why is it called Mix? This is not even heathered, but maybe it has white in it. No, it doesn't. But that's the next cone. What am I going to do with it? I don't know. This cone right here, whoo, it matches the background. This cone is fat, okay? 
But this is 500 grams as well, which is crazy compared to this. This is 500 grams as well. I guess it's just wound differently. I mean, it's a different brand as well. But this blue, my favorite color is blue. So I have a very, very, mm, how do you say it? Like a soft part of my heart is dedicated to this yarn. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. Anyway, this is Holst Garn Super Soft and it is Glacier. It's 100% Ulv. I don't know what that means but that's it right there if you can see maybe hopefully can you see no i think you can see like right there yeah anyway uld it is the color glacier and look at how heathered that looks oh, it's just lightly heathered but it's going to create so much depth in a sweater it's gonna be beautiful and i think maybe I'm already thinking about the mohair I would want to pair with it. I think I would want like an icy blue to pair with it. That would be really nice. But yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one either, which is fine. But this one right here, this is the last cone and this is the fourth woolly knit cone. This color right here. Oh my gosh. I accidentally figured out what I'm going to make with this with my sister. This is... 500 grams of course <laughs> it is british wool four ply and it is the shade steel right here and i first of all look at this color look at that oh my gosh i love it so much i'm gonna pair this with a white mohair i don't have a white mohair right now but First of all, I'm tired of knitting in anything white and anything black, so you won't see me knitting in that for a while. But mohair doesn't count. I feel like I have yarn on my nose. Mohair doesn't count because you can barely see the whiteness. It's just like a shiny strand. But I'm going to pair a white mohair with this, and I'm going to make... This is going to be the Jenny sweater. Yes, the Jenny sweater. When am I going to do that? sometime next year okay <laughs> the jenny sweater i'm gonna pair it with a white mohair it's going to be so freaking pretty so pretty just imagine this as that oh oh my gosh you gotta love a good gray yarn gray is just great okay it is great with everything i think pairing it with the white mohair will really really just First of all, it's going to lighten it. Second of all, it's just going to create such a weird color. Or maybe not, because this already has, like, white in it. So it's probably just going to elevate it. But we'll see. That's why I like mohair. You just never know what it's going to do to it. Next. Next. Oh, now we're just getting into the fingering weight yarns. I don't have anything else to pair with stuff, which makes sense because I said I don't have any more here. Now we're getting into more of the fingering weight yarns, like besides the cones and stuff. The yarn that I have here is this yarn right here. It is the Love Stitch Fibers. If you don't know the Love Stitch, she has a podcast on here. She creates bags. I have gotten some of her project bags. Oh, they're so beautiful. And she recently started dyeing yarn. So I got her first ever launch. I was like, I need to support. I need to support. I don't care. I wasn't, I wasn't going to be buying yarn. I think this is the last yarn I bought this year. So was it this year? I feel like it was this year. Yeah. Yeah, it was this year. It has to be. So this was the last yarn that I bought for myself. It is 100% non-superwash merino, 436 yards or 398 meters per 100 grams, and the colorway is called Latte. So that's the info right there. And the... Uh, <laughs> I have four skeins of this, and the project that I'm going to make with this is the Stockholm Slipover V-neck edition. So this project... This is the Stockholm slipover 
Why is my neck red? Is it the light? What the heck? It doesn't even... That's weird. Hold on. <laughs> That's so... Is it red in real life? Not really. Why does it look... It looks angry red here. Maybe it's my hair reflecting off my skin. <laughs> that sounds weird. Anyway, this is going to be the Stockholm Slipover V-neck edition. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. Also, another yarn that is close to my skin color. I love browns. I just love browns. They just look so good. I feel like brown just looks good on brown skin. It's just going to be so great this is just a, this is like a pale brown color and i think this is like a two ply or something because it is very very bouncy looking i'm still getting used to figuring out different plies but i think this is two ply the next yarn oh shoot hold on i just threw my thing and it fell off the bed brb all righty the next yarn that i'll be showcasing is this yarn right here i like to show it like this but it's packaged like this it is little wing fibers this is the second to last yarn that i bought so i bought this and then the love stitch is the last yarn that i bought this year for myself and so this is the company little wing fiber another small indie dyer i love this this is the colorway. I know, it's so different from the other colors that I get. Yeah, well, I liked it, okay? It was very nice, and I wanted to support, as well, another small business. This is Fingering Weight Yarn. It is 437 yards for 100 grams, 85% superwash merino, and 15% biodegradable nylon. That's cool. And... The project that I'm going to do with this is the Anchors Tea. Anchors Tea. I have already done the Anchor Sweater. And today, as I was going through the, going through my list on my notebook, in my notebook, I was like, the Anchors Tea is going to be this. Because I was looking to see, I'm like, okay, I need to do a tea because <laughs> of something. I'll tell you guys, like, mm, in a month or so. And I was looking at the yarn and I was like, didn't I make my Anchor Sweater? in a similar color <laughs> and, I looked, and I was like oh my gosh my anchor sweater is in a similar color but I use drops yarn for this and this is a hand dyed yarn but it is still similar and it's gonna be so cute it's going to be so cute like imagine this as this like beautiful I have four skeins of this which is plenty I just need to use one strand with this anyway so whatever is left over this is a sock yarn because it has nylon in it, so it is a sock yarn, which means I can either make socks with whatever le whatever is left over, or I can do like double strand it and make a beanie. But also, it just depends on how much yarn is left over. I think maybe I'll just need like two skeins, but we'll see. We'll see. If I have two skeins left over, I'll make a beanie. If I have one skein left over, I'll make a pair of socks. So that is going to be a tee which is something that I'm going to work on probably July-ish time. So this and so anything that's like anything that's like a slipover or a tee will probably get done very quickly or like very soon other than the April cardigan because the April cardigan is happening before anything else is happening. I'm not casting on anything new until the april cardigan until after the april cardigan okay so let's toss that and the next one is i already showed that one. Ooh, ooh, this yarn here it is this stop before you say didn't you say you're not gonna knit with black or white yarn yeah yeah but this is a tonal okay it's not all black like 
it doesn't even look that black you know like it's not black black it's tonal black which is different than black black okay <laughs> but this is by Sorella Yarn and it is called Coven it is a Halloween edition and I you know why I got it because I wanted the Halloween label wow Kalila why why get a yarn just for the label it was so cute her usual labels I need a, I need a yarn her normal labels look like this okay they look like this which is cute that's cute yeah right and then halloween came around boom halloween edition of that that is a masterpiece that is cute i am here for the art okay so i bought it for the art will i be keeping that label when i use this yarn yes i will keep this label <laughs> because it's so freaking pretty i love it so much yeah, this is a classic sock yarn, 100% subwash merino wool, 438 yards for 100 grams. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous! So gorgeous. What am I going to do with this yarn? I'm going to make the Ingrid slipover. Malika suggested that. As soon as she said, I pulled out this yarn and she's like, I already have a suggestion for that. I was like, ooh, I don't even have to look for anything. And she said the Ingrid slipover and I was like, oh oh yes oh my gosh do i know how to read charts absolutely not will i get help for that from alexandra yes i will <laughs> when will i make this i don't know maybe maybe in september mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. september <laughs> sorry you'll know later on but i have four skeins of this so and but the ingrid slipover is pretty big so I think I'll maybe use like two skeins of this yarn, which means I'll still have two skeins left over. And if that's the case, my God, oh, these wouldn't be good socks. There's no nylon in it. So I would say I can double strand it and make a beanie. Listen, anything unused turns into beanies or socks, or I can turn it into a tee. Oh my gosh, imagine imagine another anchor's tea in this color oh my gosh i think that's what i'll do when i finish the slipover i'll just make an anchor's tea heck yeah i love my brain love it all right next yarn is another sorella yarn yeah as you can see like 80 percent of my stash is hand dyed yarn because like I said before, I went crazy buying yarn after I was crocheting. I was like, oh my gosh, I have never seen this kind of yarn and crochet before, so I need to buy it. So I bought a bunch for my birthday. And now I'm glad I'm figuring out what I need, what I'm gonna make with these. Also, my battery's about to die, so I'm going to change the battery and I'll show you the next yarn. New battery. I wonder how long this video is going to be. I feel like I've been talking for so long. I actually need to drink some water. Alrighty, the next yarn is a Sorella yarn. And it is this yarn right here. Oh, this is so pretty. While the last yarn was from the Halloween collection, I think this one is from the summer summer or spring one of those i think it's for the summer i don't i don't think i bought any of the spring yarns was it for the fall no i don't remember honestly maybe it was for the summer it was for one of these but this is called studio and of course it is a superwash merino wool 438 yards fingering weight yarn because that's mainly what I use and it is so pretty just look at this color it is just so nice we decided my sister and I that this was going to be a Sunday tea this is going to be so perfect because it is going to bring out the definition of the sun rays on the Sunday tea while being so cute and 
summery. <laughs> I would say this is nice and summery. It's more like springy, but it's also summery too because it's going to be light and just so pretty. I love it so much and it's so soft. Superwash yarns are usually soft. I have four skeins of this, so like I say, if I have two skeins left over, it'll either be a beanie or it'll be socks or it can be another tee, which will be, which will be cute. Ooh. I just have to go through a lot of tees, like go through all of the tees and see which one I would really like because there are a lot of, there aren't a lot of tees, but also there are at the same time. So let's go to the next one. Okay, let's see. Is it this one? Nope. This one. Yep. All right, this next yarn. <sighs> this next yarn is an Akatar yarn. This was, I think this was the first in a collection that I actually received because I didn't receive my other yarn until like a couple months ago or a month ago, I think a couple months ago. It took like six, seven months, whatever to get. But this one came like the next week and it is Explore Knits and Fibers. If you don't know her, where have you been? Because her yarn is so beautiful. Anyway, let's, let's show. This was part of the Akatar collection that she did with Red Door Viber Studios. And this is her Denali sock base, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and it is 400 yards. And this colorway is called To The Stars Who Listen. If you know, you know, okay? But for this yarn, I decided that this is going to be a cumulus tee. I know, I'm, I'm planning all sorts of teas, I am. I live in Southern California and in one of the hottest parts. So it's forever hot here, okay? Like forever hot here. In December, it was like 80 degrees, okay? So let's say 28 degrees Celsius or something. Yeah, okay, it, it was hot, it was hot. And so I need teas to survive California weather. And even though this is gonna be wool, you know, there's still gonna be a cool breeze during that time because it starts getting cold toward the end of December, early January. I wanted something different. Like I couldn't really see this as, I can see this as a sweater, but I couldn't really see it as a sweater, as a sweater that I could think of. Any of the sweaters I just looked up and thought of, I was just like, I don't think this is good enough for it. Like, I don't know how it would feel about it being a sweater. And so then we saw tea and we saw the cumulus tea. And I'm like, I like that. I really do like that. Like, it is very nice. It is so simple. And I think I need simple, simple things, simple shirts. And I just want to create a wardrobe. So all of these yarns that I'm using, you guys know that a lot of the stuff I create, I don't usually wear. But starting with this slip over here, everything that I make for myself from here on out is going to be something that I will wear all the time, okay? It's going to be, I'm creating my wardrobe now using all of the yarns that I have, okay? Everything's going to be wearable, everything. So cumulus tea, beautiful, right? Cumulus tea, yes, okay. Now, the companion yarn to that yarn, this is more Akatar yarn. I think from here on out, <laughs> it's gonna be Akatar yarn. So, Akatar is a Court of Thorns and Roses. This is a book series, beautiful, love it. You should read it. The companion yarn to that yarn is this variegated yarn here, which I'm not a fan of variegated yarn. As you can see, I only have like one other variegated yarn, which is the Lover yarn. And everything else is like a tonal or like a light, light variegation, like the Little Wing Fibers yarn. But other than that, I think I have, I have more variegated yarns coming up, but you'll see it's because it's Akatar yarn. But forget that. Anyway, more Akatar yarn. Explore Knits and Fibers, her Denali sock yarn. This is called Court of Dreams. Court of Dreams. Court of 
dreams. Oh gosh. All of the names have significance to the book series. So that's why I'm like going crazy. I already went crazy over these yarns like in a podcast. So if you saw those, sorry, you're going to get that again. This is it. This is the companion yarn to it. It is so pretty. It's to me, this is like a light variegation because all of the yarn, <laughs> the yarn, all of the colors kind of match. But this is going to be the Colette T by Withra Designs. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but that's how I, when I see it, I'm like, Withra Designs, okay? That's going to be the Colette T. I chose the Colette T because I feel like the variegation in this yarn is going to give it so much depth. And I love, I love a nice form fitted tee where it's like, you know, the, the collar kind of like cinches to the neck and then like, it's just form fitting. I like that. I don't typically like form fitting clothes, but when it comes to tees that are designed to like fit your shape, I'm like, mm, I like that. That is pretty. And I think this yarn will be so, so good to go with it. I was reading through the pattern and I was like, I am so like spoiled with how Petite Knit writes her patterns that when I go to a different designer, I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't understand. And I'm like, okay, calm down, first of all, and just read through it. Just read through it step by step. Don't get overwhelmed. But yeah, everything from, let me see. Everything so far, besides the first sweater, which is by Hive Knits, has been, oh, and the Ripple Halter. So I was gonna say, all of this has been Petite Knit, but it hasn't, okay? We have the first sweater, which is by Hive Knits. We have the Ripple Halter, which is by Jessie Mae. And now we have the Colette T by Withra Designs. And I think, yeah yeah see see i'm i'm branching out yeah so that's what this yarn is gonna be it's gonna be so pretty that's another another tea i feel like i will be making a lot of teas during the fall honestly i think that would be so cool that's like i feel like that's a good transition piece you know wearing a tea maybe throwing a cardigan over it that's gonna be nice all right, so that's it for Explore Knits. The next yarn is Van Vansera by Teeny Button, which is another Akatar yarn, okay? This color here, just take a second to look at how beautiful this yarn is. Okay, look at this. And the color is showing up pretty bang on it's not as dark though it's like a smidge lighter smidge like a little bit lighter let's get my face out the way so you can really see this but look at that oh my gosh this is her soft sock base it is 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon listen i always get well, I tried to always get nylon in my superwash yarns. First of all, for integrity. Second of all, so when I have yarn left over, I can turn it into socks. Boom. Isn't that so smart? I know, right? But it is 464. <laughs> I can't speak. My tongue is so heavy from speaking. It is 463 yards or 425 meters per 100 grams. And the color way is called... Ben Sarah, which is the last name of the people in the autumn court, you know, you know, <laughs> and this is going to be, what is it? This is going to be a Friday slipover. Why did I choose a slipover? Because I feel like I need more slipovers. Okay. And this is going to be so pretty as the Friday slipover. And also I can also use it for something else, you know? Oh my gosh. Okay. If I use it for a slipover, right, and I just use like one skein, I have four skeins of this. All the yarn, the hand-dyed yarn you're seeing, I have four skeins of all of them, except like certain ones, but all of them have at least four skeins. I have four 
skeins of these. So if I use one skein for the slipover, I will have three more skeins. Okay, uh, 463 yards. Let's see what that is. 463 times 3. That's 1,300 yards. You know what that's good enough for? A cardigan. I can have a slipover and a cardigan. Ah, bro. I'm going to, I'm probably going to have a lot of cardigans thinking about this. Now that I'm doing a bunch of tees and a bunch of slipovers with the yarns that I have left over, I can just make cardigans with them. <sighs> I'll probably make a bunch of April cardigans and be so happy. Oh my gosh. But yeah, this is going to be the Friday slipover. I've been eyeing the Friday slipover ever since I saw Alexandra do it. And I was like, that's so pretty. I love it. But I wasn't like ready to do slipovers because I was doing everything else. But now I'm so ready to do all of these summer designs and... <sighs> It's going to be so great. I'm getting so excited just thinking about using my yarns. Oh, crap. Fell off the bed, BRB. Yeah, I'm getting so excited just thinking about using my yarns because I'm just like, oh, my God, I actually have a project plan for these. Like, literally a month ago, literally a week ago, I would not be able to tell you what I would be doing with these yarns, okay? Because I'll be like... What? I don't know. Maybe a sweater because I buy sweater quantities for my yarns because I know that if I want to make the biggest, like the biggest project that I can make with my yarn will be a sweater. So I know that if I get a sweater's quantity, then at least I know I'll have enough to do if I want to do a cardigan or if I want to do a slipover or if I want to do a shirt. So I know I'll at least have enough yarn to do either one of those projects if I change my mind. Like if I change my mind from doing the slipover, at least I know I can do a sweater using it, you know? So, but also remember a sweater's quantity is different for everyone. For me, usually, let me see. Four, six, three times four. I usually try to get a quantity of about 1700 to 1800 yards. Which is a lot because that can be a sweater's quantity for, I don't know, extra large or something, depending on the pattern. And usually the sweaters that I do, the medium will be like 1,200 yards or something, maybe, if that's like a big sweater. I don't know. I haven't done many big sweaters to know, but that's why I get around four skeins because that equals depending on the yardage if it's like 430 something yards then it's going to be like 1700 yards total for four skeins and if i get yarn that's like 463 yards then four skeins of that it's like 1800 yards so i have enough if i want to do a super oversized sweater or if i just want to do a sweater and then socks or something you know so that was a deep explanation for what Okay, the next two yarns that I'm going to show, I have four skeins, each of them. One of them is an Akatar yarn. It is the companion yarn. Uh, the camera's about to shut off, but it is a companion. That's right, sorry. It is, a it is a companion yarn to the yarn that you just saw, that I just showed you. And it is a variegated yarn, but it's like, look at this. Oh, oh my gosh. So pretty but this i could not figure out what i wanted to do with this so this is an akatar yarn the yarn i'm about to show you is not an akatar yarn but it looks similar it is a halloween yarn it's called mary sanderson which is one of the hocus pocus sisters i think uh correct me if i'm wrong but this was the Hall a halloween yarn and this is an akatar yarn i have four of these and four of these so I was looking at them and I'm like, I cannot imagine turning them into sweaters. Mainly because I'm not a very, I'm not a variegated gal, okay? So I was like, I don't know what I'll make with that. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they're sock yarns. Oh, this one is called Court of Foxes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just so, this is like a guitar yarn, okay? So, ah, okay, sorry. Just the puns and the references is just, 
Oh, beautiful. Anyway, this is a 75-25 yarn. So 75 superwash, 25 nylon, which means sock yarn. Hello. So one skein of each of these is going to be a sock. So sock set, sock set. Like a pair of socks, a pair of socks. Which means I have three more skeins. So I'm going to double strand these. So I'm going to use two skeins to make the classic rib beanie by Pearl Soho because it uses a DK weight yarn. So if I double strand this, it'll be a DK weight yarn. And then I'll have one skein left. So I'll probably give it to my sister or something for her to make socks. And then I'll give like two skeins of this yarn. Oop. I'll give two skeins of this yarn to Malika because she started making beanies. And so she can double strand that and make a beanie for herself as well. And that is what these yarns are gonna be. I know, surprising. I'm turning these yarns into socks and beanies. Like that just seemed like the best, mm, the best projects to turn them into because I don't want to have a, oh, I don't know what to turn this into yarn, you know? And I was like, these will be some pretty socks. I love variegated yarns for socks and beanies anyway, as you guys know. So it was just perfect. Like those are perfect projects for these. It's gonna be vanilla socks and then just a classic red beanie for these two. So these are the only yarns that will be turning into something that's not a shirt, a sweater, a cardigan, or a slipover. So that's cool. Please don't fall off the bed. Okay, good. Next yarns will be the Akatar yarns that I showed you in my last podcast. I showed you guys all of these yarns, but I'm showing it again for those of you who haven't seen it. And also because this is my yarn stash video, I'm showing you every single yarn in my yarn stash, except my beanie and sock yarns because I share that stash with my sister. So it's like, it's not just my stash. And plus I don't count that stash because that's not something I use often. It's just yarn there literally for when I need a small project and I'm like beanie and then I can pull out a DK weight yarn or like socks and I can pull out a sock set so yeah anyway let's get to the next projects oh I'm almost done guys almost done I wonder how long this video is hopefully it's not like no I don't care how long it is actually if it's an hour then I'm glad you watched this far all right this yarn here <laughs> all of these yarns you'll see are by red door fiber studio i love her okay such a great person kate is so great but yes this is red door fiber studio and this is a classic fingering base 100 percent superwash merino so beautiful there's a helicopter passing plane whatever this is 436 yards per 100 grams and this colorway is called cauldron boil me i love all of these names because they're all based on the akatar series so akatar puns so if you see me just laughing and like <laughs> it's an inside joke unless you're in the fandom okay so this i have four skeins of this of course let's just look at this color okay just look at this color oh my gosh it's like an orange but not you know it is so nice so what is this gonna be this is gonna be a champagne cardigan yep yes it is a champagne cardigan I am a liar. Oh, I'm lying. Oh my gosh. That's not going to be a champagne cardigan. That's going to be a hazel sweater. Hmm. It's going to be the hazel sweater. Scratch everything I just said. That yarn is going to be this sweater. The hazel sweater by Petite Knit. That is what I'm going to pair together. It's still when me pairing the drops off pack of silk, drops brushed off pack of silk, is going to make that weight. So 
Same with that. I'm going to pair that together because this is a DK and mohair sweater combo, I believe. So I'm going to pair it with drop Alpaca. <laughs> Silk. Oh my gosh. I can't believe I just got it wrong. That's because the next yarn that I'm going to show you. Which yarn is that? Nope, not this one. Not this one. Nope, not that. Which one is it? Okay. <laughs> I just totally butchered that. What the heck? Yeah, so that orangey color is going to be the hazel sweater. I'll, I'll show it again. So it, wipe your brains from that last, that last cardigan. It's not going to be that. It's going to be this. The hazel sweater. <sighs> yeah, anyway, I'm still excited for that. But this one... The champagne cardigan is going to be this colorway, this one. It's called Insignificant Human. Let me make sure I'm reading that correctly, okay? Insignificant Human Champagne Cardigan. Yes. So the champagne cardigan is going to be this right here. Imagine. But also the champagne cardigan, I believe, is also a DK weight yarn and mohair combined together. So again, for that one, I'm going to use the Jops Brush Alpaca Silk instead of Mohair Silk combo, which is totally fine because Alpaca and Silk together is just such a lovely blend. I love it so much. This colorway <laughs> is going to be, I, I wonder if I can show if this green will pop up better because I'm going to use the Sage Green from Drops. This color here will show up well no that doesn't show up well as well why does it look white <laughs> okay anyway i'm gonna pair it with this color and it's gonna be so nice imagine a giant green champagne cardigan oh my gosh and i'm gonna use white buttons white buttons with this oh that's gonna be so pretty what's next go 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 Okay, next yarn is this one. This one is called Fine is Great. I think this has a little purplish undertones. And Malika said she doesn't think it has purple anything. She just thinks it looks gray. And I'm like, it looks gray and purplish. Like, does this not look gray and purplish? Am I tripping? Because this looks gray and Of course it looks gray. But I feel like it's not a true gray, you know? The undertone just seems so brownish, purplish. Either way, this one, I'm making sure I'm reading it correctly on time. Okay, this one is gonna be the Terrazzo Neck. I bought this pattern yesterday because I was like, I need it to be a neck. Because you know, Petite Knit has like slipovers and then she has necks where it's just like, flapping in the front flapping in the back it's not a sweater it's not a cardigan it's not a slip over it's literally a neck <laughs> and i thought it was so cute imagine pairing it with like a black long sleeve shirt yeah yeah that's gonna be cute absolutely so that's what i'm gonna do with this and i want to get more for necks like i want to get the hazel neck but right now there is no yarn for that pattern so i'm not gonna get the pattern i'm I, i've paused on getting patterns i have over 100 patterns like and 82 of them being petite knit i have a bunch of my favorite things in knitwear i have a bunch of so many other designers i have them all in folders like i said i also have a folder that says knit patterns because if i don't have more than one of a certain designer's patterns they just go in one one folder all together yeah, this is going to be the Trotsil neck. That's going to be so beautiful. And yes, I say everything is going to be so pretty, so beautiful, so pretty, so beautiful. Because it is. I truly believe it will be. Why? Because the yarn is beautiful and the pattern is beautiful. Okay, okay. The next one is mm, this one. Yeah. Oh, this is impressive wingspan. <laughs> oh, 
Ah, it's such a good name. Yeah, this is impressive wingspan, a nice purple color. So pretty. Oh, count how many times I say pretty in this video. And this is going to be the Mod T by Petite Knit. This is a special pattern because this is the first pattern I ever bought of Petite Knits before I started knitting. I bought this pattern in like the summer and I didn't start knitting until August. So I bought this pattern in like June or July with no plans to ever knit it. <laughs> I just thought it looked so cool. I did not think something knit could look that cool and that good and that realistic. Like it looked store bought to me and I was just like impossible. Like this is real. So I bought the pattern. Why? Why did I buy it? I was enamored. But now that I knit, I can actually make it. And it's going to be in this color right here. Also, I have a note right here that says, Malika says pair with black mohair. So I guess I'm going to pair this with black mohair. See how that turns out. I think it'll turn out pretty good because these already have these. This already has like some dark undertones anyway. So black will literally make it so moody and nice. Oh, that would be a good Halloween top to wear. Imagine wearing that with like black jeans, knee high boots, and a black trench coat. That'd be cute. <laughs> Why did I just think of a whole outfit for this? All right, we have two more yarns. The second to last one is this yarn here. It is called Truth Teller. Truth Teller looks like this. I think this is gonna be the last time this clip ends because I'm almost done with this video. So go ahead, go ahead and end. All right, camera had to shut off, like I said, but this is, this is gonna be the last time, okay? I'm almost done. This is called Truth Teller. It is so, it's so what? pretty yep it's a blue but it's like a washed blue it looks like jeans like a jean blue a nice denim color and this is gonna be the october sweater originally i had another yarn for the october sweater but i gave it to my mom for her birthday <gasps> did i give it to mom for her birthday no i gave it to my mom for mother's day <laughs> Yeah, she's a yarn fanatic like us. So when we gave her yarn, she was just like, okay, she didn't go look crazy like that. But she was just like, oh, this is for me? We're like, yeah. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so she goes, she goes crazy like us, okay? She may not show it outwardly like we do, like as, mm, not as expressive as we do, but she, she was still excited. But this is going to be the October sweater. I already calculated all of the yardage and everything and I have enough. So I just need to pair it with the mohair and it's gonna be so nice. I need an oversized sweater, okay? I said the D in oversized. A lot of the times when I say like over, when I say things with an ED, it sounds like I didn't pronounce the D, like oversized. It sounds like I just say oversized, but I say oversized. Yeah, anyway. I need a good oversized sweater. So the October sweater will be so perfect for this. I just need to get a nice mohair. I'll just go to Knitting for Olive's site because Knitting for Olive has such great colors. So it'll be so perfect going there. All right, the last. I am a liar. This is not the last yarn. Just This is just the last fingering weight yarn. But I do have two more yarns after this i'm so sorry for deceiving you guys but not really all right this is the last fingering weight yarn that i have oh i i know i went crazy over this yarn before because this is just absolutely beautiful it is so rich in color like all of these colors are just so rich and juicy like you can just squeeze out the color and it just like drips down your hand because it just looks like it's so oversaturated like not not bad oversaturated but oversaturated where it looks like you could just squeeze it like a berry yeah that's a weird um that's a weird saying that's a weird thing to say but like that's what it feels like to me anyway this is called fire drake love it and 
I'm gonna make an April cardigan with this. Another April cardigan. Yes, I'm already making an April cardigan with the Lover yarn from Sorella. But I want another, like, imagine this as a cardigan. First of all, I'm gonna make so many April cardigans, you guys are gonna be like, girl, you can never have too many cardigans. I refuse to believe that. I don't care if it'll clash with my hair, I'm wearing it. April cardigan, very pretty. That's what it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. That's all, that's all I have to say about these yarns. Not much else to say. All right, next yarn is this one. This is Noro yarn. Noro, oh my gosh, I love this yarn so much. It is the Kakigori yarn. This is a DK weight yarn and it is 50% cotton, 30% silk, 10% viscose, and 10% polyamide. I don't know why it has viscose and polyamide, but whatever. And this is what it looks like. The color is absolutely gorgeous. I have four of these. It is 200 grams, 600 meters. What is this gonna be? Can you guess? It's gonna be the Terrazzo sweater. Yes, yes, of course. And in the Terrazzo sweater, she uses Noro Sock Noro Garden Sock so Okay, how does that pronounce? How's this said? Noro Silk Garden Sock Solo or something like that. Anyway, I am saying it so incorrectly. Don't care. And that's a fingering weight yarn and she paired it with a mohair. But this is a DK weight yarn. So I'm just going to use it single stranded, which is great because I can literally start this anytime without having to worry about like, oh, I gotta get a mohair for this or oh, I gotta get an alpaca for this. You know, I just can use it by itself. That's why I got it. I got this last year in Vegas, I believe. Was it Vegas? I think it was Vegas. And I was like, ooh, I can make the terrazzo sweater with this. <laughs> When did I go to Vegas? Was I even knitting at that time? I think I saw Tiffany knitting her terrazzo sweater and I was like, oh my gosh, she always talks about normal yarn. And I got normal yarn before. I think I was knitting at this point, probably. I think I just started knitting. So yeah, I got this and I was like, this will be a good terrazzo sweater. And it's perfect, that's a DK weight yarn. And yeah, so this is gonna be so pretty. I have four of them, so I have 6, 12, 18, 24. I have 2,400 meters. Golly. All right. This is the second to last yarn. I have one more yarn to show you guys. Just one more, okay? All right. The last yarn that I have to show you is this yarn right here. It is Knitting for Olive Double Soft Merino in the color Hazel. This is a weird color, okay? I didn't buy this. My sister, Kahila, bought this. Crochet with Kay, if you check her out. She bought this yarn, and there are 20 balls. <laughs> she bought 20 balls of this, and 20 balls of another color, and 20 balls of another color. So she got 60 balls total. Why? Because this yarn is discontinued. When she bought it, they were discontinuing it, and they're like, you know, get the yarn if you can blah 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 and there weren't many colors left so she got this color a dark dark gray color which is so it's so nice and then a pink color I originally had the pink color and then I was like mm, yeah you want to trade so I traded it with one of my sisters I forgot who and I got this color this was on oh it was Malika's own this was on Malika's shelf right and oh my gosh if you have animals if you have specifically a dog or a cat, you know, they just mess up your yarn for no reason. Okay, I have found mohair dragged under our beds, like in every single room, because the cats would snatch our yarns. And that's mainly why I have it packed up. And when this was on Malika's shelf, her cat chewed through the front row. So there are like four or five skeins of yarns that's just like, chewed up but it's okay because it's just like snapped i can just like toss those pieces and be fine anyway i have 20 balls of this so i'm going to do two different projects with it the first project is going to be the terrazzo slip over i know i'm doing a lot of terrazzo things i'm doing a terrazzo neck terrazzo sweater and now terrazzo slip over the terrazzo slip over uses this yarn i think does it use this yarn 
I think it does, or something similar, if it doesn't, or it suggests this yarn. So I'm gonna make this Rosso slip over. As you can see, it's gonna be so nice. Oh, I love the high neck. Oh my gosh, I love that so much. And then I'm gonna make a vest number one, which actually does use this yarn. So I'm excited for that because when I had this yarn lying around, I was just like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. Like, what am I gonna do with it? What am I gonna knit with it? I don't know what I'm gonna knit with it, blah, 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 blah. But now I have everything assigned to a project. That is all of my yarn and all of the projects that I'm gonna do with these yarns. So as you can see, every single yarn that I have mentioned has a project except for three of my cones. Yeah, so two of my woolly knit cones and my host garn, <laughs> host garn, host garn yarn. Garn means yarn, so I don't need to say host garn yarn. My host garn yarn <laughs> has, has a pro everything else has a project assigned to it. So now when I look at my stash, sorry, I saw someone walking outside in the window, so I was just like, anyway. So now when I look at my stash, I'm gonna be like. <gasps> I'm gonna knit that with that and it's gonna get me so excited and it's gonna actually give me an urge to use up my stash instead of going out and buying yarn for a certain pattern and not a lot of people have been coming out with patterns recently so that's good because I am a pattern whore h-e-a-u-x-r-e -E, whore and <laughs> people are gonna be like what? It's a, that's, it's an insider that my sisters and I say. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, people aren't coming out with a lot of patterns right now, which is, well, patterns that I care for right now because, not because, patterns that I care for right now, which is good because I won't be tempted to just like get a pattern and be like, oh, I need yarn for that. Now, I don't need any more patterns because all of my yarn has a place and all of my yarn is accounted for. So no more space for any new projects to take up my yarn and no more yarn to buy patterns for. So all in all, I'm gonna just use up my stash and I'm not gonna buy yarn until September around my birthday. And also another reason, I will tell you guys later. I'll tell you guys in August maybe. Yeah, I'll let you guys know in August. Who knows? I may change my mind and say it earlier, but you you guys will see in August. But yeah, I'm not going to buy any yarn until September, which is my birthday. So I got to get myself presents, okay? Which is yarn, the form of yarn. Yeah. Anyway, that is all that I have. That is my entire stash. Let me know what kind of stash you guys have and what kind of projects you plan on doing with the yarn in your stash. And if you have if you have told yourself you're not gonna get any yarn, listen, there's nothing wrong with buying yarn. If you wanna buy yarn because you wanna buy yarn, buy yarn. It doesn't matter if there's a project assigned to it or not, buy it if you want it. Don't feel guilty. But also, if you're like me and you're like, I just wanna knit what's in my stash, like I don't wanna buy more yarn because I wanna knit what's in my stash and not for any other reason, then you know, just do what I did and take out all of your yarn out of your stash and just look at it and assign projects to them. Have someone help you and be like, well, do you think this will be good as a cardigan? Do you think this will be good as a sweater? And I, I'm telling you, you'll feel so great, okay? Look at Lizzie from Hive Knits. Me watching her do that made me happy and it made me want to take out my yarn and do the same thing and I'm so happy that I did. So hopefully this encourages you guys to be able to find projects for your stash and yeah, that's all. Thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to subscribe if you're new and give this a thumbs up and share with your friends and family. And I'll see you guys next time with another video. It'll probably be a vlog. Yeah, it will be a vlog. So bye.